welcome to the Signs of Art. My name is Mott Tuman, and today we're going to be giving you guys a whole intro into pigments. Pigments, what they are essentially, is really any kind of substance that can be ground down into a small enough particle where it will retain its color and be insoluble in a paint binder. That's a kind of complicated definition, but we're gonna break that down for you guys. So insoluble in a paint binder, that means that if you put it in an oil for oil paint, if you put it in water for like watercolors or an acrylic, that is, it's not going to absorb into the water like a dye would. It's gonna stay in its granular state throughout the binder that you're using. The other property of that is that it can retain its color when it is ground down. Anything can be ground down, but not everything is gonna retain its color. Lots of times you might go out in nature and you might wanna grab leaves or flowers or something like that and grind it down and try to make a paint out of it. But unfortunately that's not always going to work. Sometimes you will be able to achieve a dye-based paint, but when it comes to pigments, if I try to grind these, they are one, not going to grind very easily, but also as I grind them, the chlorophyll, which is what gives plants their color, is gonna break down and degrade. It's gonna turn kind of into a brownish color. I'm gonna need some water for this. All right, I've added some water to it. You can already kind of see brown spots on these leaves where the chlorophyll has already degraded. Okay, so you can start to see here that the stilled water is picking up a little bit of this leaf pulp and you can see that it's turning brown on all these sections where the leaves have really broken apart. That's the chlorophyll and the color of this degrading. So that's why these leaves would not work particularly well as a pigment. So whenever we have pigments like this, the way that these like brilliant colors are produced is that, you know, wavelengths of light, we all kind of know the chemical compounds of whatever we're looking at is absorbing and reflecting different wavelengths of light into our eyes and the way our eyes kind of perceive that determines the color of the object. That's a really loosey-goosey way to <laughs> describe that. But essentially, when I was grounding down those leaves, those chemical compounds were being altered, they were changing, and that's why the colors were changing. When we have things like pigments, which are commonly made from stones and clay, those, when they're ground down, are able to hold on to their color the best they can. So that's what how we get these beautiful pigments. While we couldn't get any pigments from those leaves, pigments come from a large variety of different sources. A lot of them really sketchy, honestly. But we're going to start out with some of the non-sketchy ones. So some of the oldest pigments that were sourced were actually from clay. Those were like iron oxides and ochres are typically our colors. Burnt sienna is one of the very old, really old pigments that are known as earth pigments when they come from the earth. Um, those kind of pigments are ancient. They were commonly used in cave paintings. Ancient peoples learned that if you have a color like a yellow ochre, if you roasted it over fire, it could create a red ochre pigment that they can then use to paint, which is why yellows and reds and oranges were super common in cave paintings in ancient days. Another place that pigments can come from besides the earth are metals. Copper is one of the very, very common place that people source their pigments from. It had some of the very, very popular pigments in ancient days. So one of those being verdigris. Verdigris was created when copper came into contact with fermenting grapes, which you know produce acidic acid, and created that really rich green color that ended up being one of the most popular greens through antiquity up until the 19th century. Another really popular pigment that came from color was Egyptian blue, which was actually the first synthetic artist material ever produced. It was produced in Egypt by taking copper and again reacting it with acidic acid and I believe embalming fluids and a couple other things and then baking it for hundreds of hours to produce a really, really brilliant blue color. Both of these methods of creating pigments are toxic. Uh, don't try to mix copper with acidic acid in your home. You will create a really toxic environment that you don't want to come in contact to. Please leave it to the professionals. But that's kind of one of the sketchy things about pigment is that a lot of early pigments were highly toxic and they had no idea. Another one of the popular pigments that comes from a metal is lead white. Luckily, lead white is not very common these days. As many of you know, lead, very toxic. But lead white was originally created 
they ha would have coils of lead that they would then cover with cow manure, mm. interestingly enough, and then react it with, again, acidic acid. A lot of pigments came about from the reaction of different metals with acidic acid, and then they would scrape the crust of whatever formed on those coils, and that is how we got lead white pigment. Another pigment that definitely comes from very sketchy origins is a color called mummy brown. I'm going to say right now, this is not real mummy brown, and it's really good that it's not. Oftentimes this pigment is also referred to as caput mortem, which is the Latin for um, deadhead. Uh, I took four years of Latin and I can't remember what that's supposed to mean. But anyway, caput mortem or mummy brown, they were originally created from mummies. Typically human or cat mummies were used. If you're wondering like, why did they think of this? Who thought this would be a good idea? It was apparently because um, people believed that originally the Egyptians had used something known as bitumen, which I believe is a type of petroleum, in the mummification process. And bitumen was something that was commonly added into paints back then. So they thought it's ready paint. Luckily, we also don't do this anymore. Grandma is not being turned into paint. <laughs> So all, this is not true mummy brown, it is a hue of mummy brown. And I will get into a little bit all about hues. Before I get into that, I wanna talk about one more creepy, weird pigment that I'm also glad is not being used anymore today, which is Indian yellow. Indian yellow was first created in India and it was done by feeding cows exclusively mango leaves and then taking their urine and forming it into a pigment. Uh, this is not done anymore because it's weird and also extremely abusive to cows. But obviously now we also have a hue of Indian yellow that is a incredibly popular pigment that we still use. Essentially, a lot of pigments were created using either toxic materials or highly unethical practices. So as you all kind of know, artists will do some crazy things for their art supplies. If you wanna be able to tell what pigments were used in your paint, any kind of tube of paint that you'll get will have pigment codes written on it. Every pigment code is associated with a specific pigment. So the pigment code on this one is PGBK7. That P stands for pigment, G is gonna be a green, and then the BK is gonna stand for black. And then seven is gonna to refer to the specific pigment that this color is associated with. Any tube of paint that you might get might also be labeled as a hue, as I mentioned earlier when we were talking about mummy brown or Indian yellow. A hue is essentially a color that's being produced with pigments that were not what the paint was originally created with. So mummy brown originally created with mummies, it's using a different pigment now. And actually mummy brown nowadays is not labeled as a hue because it's never used as mummies anymore. So everyone kind of knows that this is now the true mummy brown, even though it is technically a hue of mummy brown. Lots of times this can happen because in cases like mummy brown where we just really shouldn't use that pigment anymore, but it can also happen like in the case of the pigment PO48, which created the color quinacridone nickel azo gold, which is a mouthful. But that pigment, we actually ran out of the resources of, and we just don't have it anymore to create that color. So anyone producing that color nowadays is using a hue of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have any questions about pigments or things you wanna see included in future episodes, leave it in the comments below and watch us next time on The Art of Science. Leaf mulp. That. Oh, a word? <laughs> no. I was trying to say mulch and pulp, so I said oh, okay. mulp. I didn't know if I, because I'm learning new words. It I sounds like it I should be. Mulp.